Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 200. 200! I, I, I don't have the words. <laughs> For anyone who's been on this journey since the beginning, seven and a half years ago, or, I mean, honestly, anyone who's listened to a single show, thank you. Genuinely, thank you. I I always say the most valuable thing you can give someone is your time, and there are thousands of other podcasts out there. The fact that anyone takes the time to listen to this show, something I'm so passionate about, it's, it's not lost on me, and I'm so grateful. To celebrate this insane milestone, I wanted to do something special. Episode 100 was my dad. This one is with Loretta Bell, my mom. Despite having an incredibly difficult childhood, she is the kindest, most supportive, unconditionally loving person to ever exist. And I know I'm beyond biased, but trust me, I'm sure you'll agree by the end. In this episode, we talk about her growing up the youngest of nine kids, always wanting to have kids of her own, surviving a house fire, meeting my dad, living on a farm, moving to Florida, getting through tough times, not letting your past define who you are, and so much more. I could not be more proud to share this episode with you all, and I'm so excited for you to get to know one of the most important people in my life. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 200, with Loretta Bell, my mom. Theme song time. Have you ever done anything like this? Have you ever been on the news? Not to where I talk. Oh, really? Wait, so when were you on the news when you didn't talk? <laughs> <laughs> when you were a, a baby, when I worked, first started working at Walmart, um, they'd done a Children's Miracle Network, and they done went through Walmart and asked anybody that had a kid that went through had any dealings with the Children's Miracle Network. You had been in, in and out for the first two years of your life, so we were on there. We didn't say anything. Really? Like, yeah. There was like three of us. I didn't know this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. The first two years you were going in and out of King's Daughters Hospital in Chesapeake, Virginia. Weird. How did I not know this? I knew I knew I was in and out of the hospital like the first couple of years. I didn't know like we were on the news. I was on TV out the gate, ma. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I wish I had been able to get a clip of that, but I never... They were supposed to send us a clip of it. Oh, really? But they never did. Oh, uh, that was in Virginia? Because that was the nearest hospital. Yeah, that was the only... That was the nearest children's hospital. Because when you were in the hospital, when you were four months old, they... I had to carry... They sent you straight there. Ah, uh, that, that was when the, the whole thing happened? Yeah. All right, I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you tell people... When people ask you where you're from, what do you say? Uh, North Carolina. You say North Carolina? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. But you were born in Portsmouth. Yep, Portsmouth, Virginia. Only because it was the closest hospital. Yeah, it was a naval hospital, and oh. granddaddy was military, so anything. He's, he was in the Coast Guard for 10 years and Navy 10 years to get his 20 in. We always, anything medical, we always went to naval hospital in Portsmouth. And how far away is that from where you grew up? Um... An hour away, 45 miles, something like that. Do you always go there for, like, all medical stuff? Yep. Mm. yep. Okay. Yeah. I remember going there a lot when I was little. Up until I was probably eight, I was going every Friday because I used to have get ear infections all the time. Huh. You'd go up there every Friday. And you're the youngest? I'm the youngest. Out of nine. Yep. That's a lot. <laughs> it is. <laughs> what's, what's, the, what's the ages between everybody? Um, anywhere from 18 months to two years. Really? Yeah. What's the biggest gap, do you know? Um, probably me and you ain't Charlotte. Really? What's the difference? Two years. Okay. Yeah, I think there's maybe 
two between her and Uncle David. Mm. And the rest of them are like about 16, 18 months apart. That is old school. Yeah. We were like stair steps growing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Was that, did it feel like, because what's the difference between you and Aunt Betty? Aunt Betty was first, right? She was first. Okay. So what's the age difference between you two? Um, 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. Because she'll be, this year she'll turn 76. Gotcha. She's 76. I think Dorothy is, will be seven, she just turned 75. Mm-hmm. And Yank Brenda is exactly 10 years older than me. So she'll turn, in May she'll turn 74. And then it was your Aunt Doris. And then it was my brothers, Wayne, Joe, David, Charlotte, and then me. How was it living in a house with eight siblings? Challenging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many bedrooms was there? Three. Three? Okay. Okay. We had the one bedroom. We had two bedrooms on the back. Um, Betty and Dars shared a bedroom. And Dorothy and Brenda shared a bedroom. <laughs> and this is going to sound weird. Sure. But the other bedroom we had... Because until everybody started moving out, getting married and moving out, um, me and Charlotte had our cribs in the mom and dad's room. And then mm -hmm. we had a uh, bed for mom and dad. And then we had two other ones, one that Wayne and Joe slept in. And then David had his own bed. One bedroom had a lot in there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so you've got two bedrooms and then the, the youngest, the cribs were in the parents' room. Whew. Yeah, when me and Yank Charlotte were nine, well, I was nine, she was uh, ten or eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, Yank Brenda and Uncle Darth, and Uncle Darth, ain't Darth. <laughs> 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 Oops. It's a lot of names. <laughs> it's a you, nine. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Yank Dorothy and Aunt Brenda, they got married on the same night. Oh. And when they when they got married, then me and Yank Charlotte moved in their bedroom. Well, by then, um. Pretty much everybody had started moving out by then. Oh, really? Yeah, because your Uncle Wayne, he had gotten married. Mostly it was mainly um, after your Aunt Brenda and Aunt Dorothy left, it was more or less your Uncle David, your Aunt Charlotte, and me there. So. Wow. Did every, w could, because this was kind of like a while ago, did everybody get married really young? Um, your Aunt Brenda got married at 17, almost 18. Um, Aunt Dorothy was, she was in her early 20s. Um, Uncle Wayne, I think he got married in his early 20s. And Uncle David, he got married probably in his mid-20s. Gotcha. Did everyone leave in the order that they came? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. The first ones to leave was, um, you ain't Dorothy and ain't Brenda. On the same day. They're like, let's get out of here and let's coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> when did, how old were you when you left? I was 18, almost 18. Because I, I left home a week before I graduated from high school. I moved in with Aunt Charlotte. Oh, okay. There you go. You had a place to go. Yeah. That was my next question is, where'd you go? Yeah. I stayed with her until I got out on my own. Gotcha. She carried me back and forth to school until I graduated. Nice. And I got a job and saved up enough money to get my own place. So. Sure. Was this all in Elizabeth City? Yep. She had an apartment there on um, Dyer Street, and I stayed with her. And then probably a couple years later, um, her and Uncle Billy got their own place together. And wow, because they're still together. That's yes, we've been together <laughs> since, they were s since she was 16. So what did you go to school or right into work? Do you remember your job? Um, Paint this for me. I graduated from high school and probably about a couple of months later, I started my, my first job. Yeah. First job was a waitress at a place called um, Country Kitchen. Nice. I was there for, for a little while and then I went to a uh, pancake house and worked there for probably three years and I got pregnant with Glenn oh 
and how old were you? I was 20 when I got pregnant with him. I had 20? 21. Oh my god. I had Glenn at 21. Was that on purpose? <laughs> yep. Really? Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted kids. I, I don't yeah. Know, just something about kids. I just. It was just a thing. Yeah. I just, think some people are just wired that way. Yeah. And some people are not. Yeah. Like me. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted kids. Yeah. Cause I, I started babysitting at nine. Oh really? Like other people or like? Uh, well, I guess you were the youngest. You weren't. Well, babysitting was, your uh, siblings. Me and Nate Charlotte used to go um, like every other weekend to Aunt Dorothy's. Oh, right. And we'd babysit Donnie and Daryl while her and Jackson went out, you know, for the weekend. Gotcha. And time with some friends. And so we'd watch the kids. And so hmm. I guess that was my first job, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you watched her kids and you're like, I'd like to do this too. Yeah. Huh. They were good kids. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the opposite. <laughs> 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 I like being able to give kids back. You know, yeah. it's like I I love my nieces and nephews, but at the same time, I'm like, ooh, I need to, I need to sleep. Yeah. I need to relax. Yeah, but I don't know. It's just something about kids. I'm. Yeah, you just got kids. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How how did it compare? Because you're 20 years old. I'd argue still a child yourself, mm-hmm. and you have Glenn. Glenn, was he? So he's named Glenn. His yep. dad is Glenn. Yep. But he's not a junior. No, because he's got the he's got balance as a last name. Oh. He doesn't have his dad Saunders as his last name. Right. If he had, then he would have been a junior. But gotcha. He still has he has a balance name and not Saunders. Right. Was that a conversation? Because Greg and I are also balances. Yeah. But our father's Weatherly. Yeah. Huh. Because we weren't we weren't your yeah. dads weren't married. To, we weren't married. Sure. And that was like a thing. You like if we're not married, you're not getting last name kind of thing. I wanted kind of to protect you guys. Yeah, that's smart. Because good for you. Because good for us. Because the, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the way it works is, even though I was your mom, if y'all had your dad's last name, he would have more rights to you than I would because that's the law. Because oh. you have his last name. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So you were so you were twenty. How did it compare? Because you always wanted kids, and then you had your first kid. Was it everything you thought it'd be, or was it different? It was. Yeah. Um, it was a little hard there for a while because I was also going to college. Right. I was had trying to raise him and also working. Whew. So. My God. I was. At twenty. Yeah, it was a lot. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. I mean. Well, that's good that you feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 At 20. At 20. That's crazy. I'm 32 this year, and I can't imagine doing that now. Yeah. It, I, I'd do it over again if I... Yeah. Did you come up with Glenn, or did Glenn come up with Glenn? I'm, I'm always I, fascinated how names show up. I came up with that. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, that's a good name. We can do it again. Yeah. It, um, I found out <laughs> years later that um, it was brought to my attention that... Um, the name Glenn in French is a girl's name. Really? Oh, Glenn Close. Yeah. And thought, Interesting. And I thought, and I kind of <laughs> looked at Glenn. I said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> if I'd known, I would I sure. maybe would have changed a different name. But Well, I mean, Keith's middle name was Laverne. So, yeah. you know, back then they just had different names, different yeah. things. I don't know where his mom came up with that name. Yeah. She's a big Laverne and Shirley fan, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I know when people would try to make Keith mad, they'd throw his middle name in there. That would uh, really so bad. <laughs> Different times. Yeah. Nowadays, there's people named Absidy. Did you know that? I know. And it's spelled A B C D E. Can you imagine? That'll be a lot. These names people come up with nowadays. It's like where? I guess. I guess technically, yeah, you can name anybody anything. I have a friend named Keith who spells it K E Y T H E. Isn't that neat? It is. Yeah, Keith Farley. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, what? I should change my middle name to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you had you had Glenn mm-hmm. at 20. Mm-hmm. When did the fire happen? What was that? What's that story? Because I know, like, you've mentioned a few things, like, here and there, but I don't know, like, the details. Yeah, um, we were living in a town called New Hope, and Keith had gone to work. Okay. Keith is my father. Yep. Glenn's dad is 
Glenn as well. Yeah. And Glenn was there and Amy, which is Keith's oldest daughter. Gotcha. And At your place. Yeah. And we were, um, I was washing clothes because back there then I had like a, a lot of people don't really know what it is, but a ringer type wash machine. Oh, what is that? That's this wash machine that has like a ringer on the top. It's got like two little rolls that you push, you put the clothes to, and it rings, it squishes the water out of oh. the clothes. Oh, huh. That's the old fashioned. Yeah. That's what I grew up with. Okay. But um, I was in there doing that, and we had an electrical fire where sparks came out of the wall and set the chair right beside it on fire. Oh. And one of the kids, um, Amy, came running in and said there was a fire in the living room. And I went running in there, and by the time I got in there, the curtains had caught fire. Oh, no. So I grabbed both of the kids and got them to the door. I put pushed Glenn out the front door and went running to the back of the house because Amy just pulled away and went running to the back of the house. Ah, uh, yikes. So I had to run out and get her. Fire department came, and the fire they said that fire was so hot that you could see the smoke three counties away. Really? And when the dishes, they'd pick the dishes up, and it would crumble like a... a oh, like a dust? Like just a dust in your hand. Oof. And the only thing, we had a... um what they call a bladder water bed. Like a, oh, okay, water bed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the only thing, everything kind of melted and burst and kind of crumbled, except that the fire department literally had to bust the, the water bed to let the water out. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, what an endorsement for a water bed. Yeah. It will survive <laughs> a house fire. Yeah. Wow, how old were you when this happened? 20... Five? 25, so Glenn was young, young. He was three. Wow. Yep. So you weren't with Big Glenn anymore. You're with Keith. Keith mm -hmm. is at work? Yep, he was at work. What time was? What time did this happen? Like 8.30 in the morning, 9 o'clock. Okay. It was early in the morning. <sighs> Man, I guess if you're going to have a house fire, don't have it at like 3 in the morning. You know, yeah. at least where people are awake and ready. Yep. But everything just gone? Everything. The only thing that I was able to save out of the house was one photo album. And that was because it was under a wool blanket. Wool won't burn. Oh. Huh. And that was the only thing I got. I got a, maybe a handful of pictures of Glenn. Really? Out of that. Everything else was... Did you just have to watch? Like, you're, so you're washing clothes. You're 25 years old. One of the kids comes in yelling that the house is on fire. You just grab the kids and yeah. then get out of the house and you just got to sit there and watch it happen. Yep. We sat there and watched that house go up in smoke. Oh. <sighs> And it's what made it so bad. The, the guy that we were renting from, mm -hmm. um, until they investigated it, they thought that we were in cahoots with the guy that owned the house oh. because he was in court for fraud. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> so they thought maybe they had paid us to kind of set the house on fire so he right. could collect engine. But they found out that it was electrical. The fire department done all kinds of investigation and mm -hmm. said that it was electrical, that there was nothing anybody could have done. That, that happened eight days after Christmas, so everything that oh, no. we got the kids and everything for Christmas went up huh. in smoke. How do you deal with that, like, mentally? Because I assume everything you had was there. So, like, you start from scratch? Yep, started from scratch. It's kind of hard to deal with. You know, you got all these emotions mm -hmm. running through, and you think, could I have done something different? Sure. You know, and... Electrical fires, you can't, you know. It's, it's, just, it's yeah. just bad luck. So, but it, starting over was was a challenge. Yeah. It, but we, we did it. Yeah, you're still here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where did you go from there? Um, we went to stay with his mom and dad for two or three months. Kids? Yep. Okay. And then um, we had... He had found a uh, a lot out there, like going to Hertford, and we had a double wide on there, and that's where we stayed. Gotcha. We were there for two, three years. So, you had the house fire. You moved into a double wide. You were there for three years. When when did the stuff with Glenn happen? Uh, right after the fire. Really? Like right after? Right after. Yeah. Um, I guess when I had. Uh, push Glenn out the front door to get 
run back and get Amy. He fell and got some bruises on his butt. At like five. Yeah. That's what kids and do. He evidently his dad his dad called me and asked if he could come get him to carry him to get get some clothes because we lost everything. And I said, yeah, I didn't think anything of it, you know. And mm -hmm. I called him that night because he hadn't brought Glenn back. And he said, well, could he spend the night? I said, yeah, that's fine. But he said he'd bring him back the next day. He didn't. Oh. The, um, social services came knocking at the door and said that he would be staying with his dad for a little while because he got bruises and his dad saying that I abused him. Sheesh. So we fought in and out of court for three years and he had gotten friends with because he had worked at the ambulance service big Lynn did yeah okay and he had gotten in good with the social workers that was next door to him mm. and uh <laughs> he was telling them all this stuff and they set a court date for us to go and i had never stepped foot in this church that they were going to him and dolores okay and when it went to court he had got the pastor to go up there on the on the witness stand and say that um glenn never had any clean clothes he never had food I mean, oh he, a person you've never met before yeah. and I mean, he had this other lady that went to church with him that said that yes yeah, she knew me from years back and that i didn't uh, put air my jobs and everything before my kids, which everybody knew wasn't true. Sure. But um, they said that um, Glenn would have temporary custody of him until I got myself situated with my own place and everything. Mm -hmm. And when um, it's probably a year later, we were getting ready to go back to court because I'd found a job and have my own place and car and everything and he skipped town with him for six months i didn't know where glenn was <laughs> i finally got a call from because he had him and dolores had split up and he had followed his neighbor which he started seeing her they he followed her to decatur illinois ah. and i guess things were kind of rocky there for a while and he slashed his wrist that's how I found out where Glenn was because the police department called and said that um, in Illinois they didn't hold against a parent if they try to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. If they get so in distress, they don't have a way out. Gotcha. So they gave me 24 hours to go up there. I told them there was no way because I there was no way I could get a plane ticket, get the money for a plane ticket. So I wrote the judge and explained what was going on and um, asked him could he give me a little time in the meantime glenn had gotten big glenn had gotten real close with the judge and a lawyer up there so they sent me a message telling me that if that he went up there and he told him that when he moved he lost he had custody of glenn mm -hmm. and he lost his paperwork so they automatically gave him full custody Oh. didn't check with me or anything and they told me when they called me they told me that they would um that if they found out that i was step foot in illinois they would have me arrested for attempted kidnapping that's so wild what year was this um this was 85 wow Things were different back then. Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, it's, it is very different. Yeah. 85? I, I didn't see him until so Glenn left. I, I was seeing it before he left with him. Mm -hmm. I was seeing him every weekend. And he was, when he was? When he was five. Okay. And his dad left town with him, and I didn't see him until he graduated from high school. We were there for that. Yep. Glenn, little Glenn, um called me and wanted to know if I would go to his graduation. I told him I would be there. Yeah, we drove from Florida. Yeah. South Florida. Yeah. His dad weren't happy. Yeah, who gives a yeah, shit? He, <laughs> 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 uh, he was upset because we were going up there, or I was going up there, and he said he didn't want me there and that he had a problem with me coming, but I told him that 
Lil Glenn wanted asked me to come, and I was coming no matter what. Yeah. So. Huh. I. Man, I mean, we didn't. We you know, we don't have to get into it. With uh, you know, your childhood wasn't great. No. Granddaddy was <laughs> evil incarnate, just awful. So then you move out with Aunt Charlotte. You start working. You have a kid finally, and a random electrical fire happens. And then when do so like eight days after Christmas, so like very beginning of the year is when the fire happens. How long after that was Glenn taken? Uh, Glenn was actually taken the night of the fire. Oh no! Yeah, his dad came and got him. And then just like yeah. you didn't know where he was, yeah. couldn't find him, and then. Yeah. And <sighs> I come to find out, one of my friends that I went to school with, uh -huh. she was watching Glenn while oh. his dad worked. And she she had told your Aunt Brenda that she had him. Huh. And she asked me if I wanted to come get him. I said, yeah. So I yeah, got of the course. car. And she said that before I got there, she had asked Glenn if he wanted to see his mom. He ran in there and got his coat. He was ready to come to me. Yeah. I got him, and I went over to... Keith's mom and dad's house where we were staying and all of a sudden I heard the cops coming. Well, they had a ceramic shop out in the backyard and they had this little closet in there. I hid with Glenn in the closet. Oh. And the cops came in there and I was so scared that Glenn was going to make a noise or cry. Yeah. But he had fell asleep. Whew. So they, they left and they told Keith and his mom and dad, they said, we know that you, she's here with him. To make it easier on her, you need to tell her to turn him over. And I had to turn him over. <sighs> and My then, God. Then probably two months later, Glenn left with him. How, did it, how do you survive that? It takes a lot. I mean, it, a lot of crying. I bet. I bet. Um, you just kind of keep hoping that... Something you something will happen to where you, it gets better. Yeah. You know, it's it was really a rough fifteen years. I mean, I'd it's a long time. Uh. Yeah. I mean, after he took him, I didn't put up a Christmas tree. Yeah. You know, things that I would celebrate with Glenn, I didn't really, I didn't really put up a Christmas tree until you and you came along. Really. Yeah. When you and Greg were born, then. That's when I started, you know, putting the Christmas trees up. But up until then, I guess it was too much of a memory. Yeah. So it, I just, you know, I, I still loved Christmas. Sure. But I didn't. It's hard to find the yeah. joy yeah. with all the. Yeah. Ugh. Do you, is that something that you learned somewhere? Like just to have that sort of like hopefulness? Because like you i've said this before you have every right to be the most bitter hateful person in the world and everyone will be like yeah that makes sense but you're not and like to go through something like that how do you keep being a good person after that or why yeah. <laughs> like you know i i don't want my childhood to define who i am yeah my mom i loved her to death to me she was a saint i learned a lot from my mom i saw what she went through and I saw how she dealt with it, and I guess I learned a lot from her. Okay. I mean, she, she that that woman, she endured a lot, and she still smiled through it all. Really. Yep. And at Christmas, you don't hear that song played anymore, but Snoopy and the Red Baron, the Christmas version. Uh huh. Yeah. That was her favorite song. Oh, okay. Because she said that with that, that gave that would give you hope. No matter how bad things were, really? there was always hope. Snoopy. Snoopy. So it comes from Snoopy. That's Snoopy. That's wow. Snoopy and the Red Baron song at cri the sir Christmas version. Yeah. It was That's what kept Grandma going. Yeah. And, and then you saw her survive all this, and you're like, well, she can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And even even now to this day at Christmas, I, I have to at least play that song, look it up on the Internet, and play it at least once yeah. at Christmas. Wow. That's nuts. Yeah. That's a lot, Ma. Yeah. And you're in your 20s. You're still a kid going through all this. Yeah. It's, you know, you you can either let your past define who you are mm -hmm. and let that change you. Sure. But I refuse to 
let that define who I am or how I deal with things. Or yeah. I don't know. I guess, how do I want to put it? You can't let the bad stuff overpower the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's always going to be some bad in the world. Mm hmm But you just have to deal with it in a good way. Don't, don't let that make you have a cold heart. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, I just, I've seen the side of my dad where he did have a cold heart. Yeah. And I. Assuming there I was one at all. Yeah. <laughs> <a trip. laughs> I, I don't want to be like him. Yeah. And I made up my mind. I would not be like him. I would be like more like my mom. Sure. I mean, she's, to me, she was a saint. Yeah. And her name was? Dorothy. Great. Yeah. She was... She was something. She was, she's, like I say, she went through a lot and she, you know, she'd go in the little room, little corner and cry and she'd come back out with smiles, you know. Sure. That was her way of dealing with it. Mm. So. So this happens with Glenn. How long, I'm trying to track it here in my head. So you, you and Big Glenn weren't together for very long. We were together a year and a half. And you had a kid. Wow. Ma. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even propose to Monique for until we were together for over eight years. <laughs> You're like, I want a child. <laughs> okay. And then you got with Keith shortly after because you were babysitting Amy and Glenn at the same time. Yep. Okay. And then how long till I came around? Glenn was born in 80? Uh, yep. I was born in 91. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was, what, five, five, six years after? Uh, me and Keith were together on and off for like 10 years. Okay. How did you guys meet? That's funny. Okay. Because I, l I had an apartment on Burgess Street, Cy uh, Cypress Street mm -hmm. in Elizabeth City. And his sister, Debbie, lived in an apartment across the street. Okay. And he used to, he was staying with her for a while. And there was a, a lamp post mm -hmm. right in front of my apartment. Yep. Every day he would come flying in and pull in. And I always waited for him to hit that lamp post. Oh. <laughs> he would come within inches of hitting that post, but he never did. Yeah. And then one day we started talking and then kind of went from there. Okay. Okay. So you just were waiting for an accident to happen. And you're like, oh, I should probably see who's driving. Yep. He, I mean, he come flying in there. And I mean, it was almost to where he would slide into the parking space. Really? And so fast. And you're like, this is going to be good one of these days. Yep. I waited for him to hit that lamp post so many times, but he, <laughs> he never did. He came close, but never did. So you're on and off for 10 years, and then at what point did you decide to start having kids? Um, like, when did you think? Because I imagine after gone, going through what you just went through with Glenn, like, that conversation can't be easy. To Like, want, like what, why would you want to get back into the saddle after going through that? I wanted a kid. I wanted yeah. Yeah. You're like even it's <laughs> like you said like don't let the past define you. Yeah. You're like that sucked, yeah. but I'm I I want a kid. I wanted I wanted to have a kid to to have somebody that I could love all the time. That would be sure. that I could show, you know. Yeah. Something to put love into. Yep. Yep. Like me and Kubo. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> okay. And uh then I showed up. Yep. Now where did my name come from? Was there another name? Was there ever going to be something else? Yours, no. No. So I, I had, I can't remember what show it was, but I'd watch it every week. It had a guy on there named Brian Keith. Nice. An actor? Uh, yep, an actor. <laughs> an actor, yep. <laughs> I did. I watched it. He was actually, I think, on the A-Team. Gotcha. Okay. I know he was the, the dad in the original Parent Trap. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, Brian Keith, that sounds pretty good. And then Keith was your dad's name too, so Right. You're like, I can I can trick Keith into thinking. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Now it's gonna get a little weird okay. because uh I never talk about myself on these things. My favorite thing about the show is that it's about other people. Mm -hmm. But you're my mom. So I'm a part of this. Yeah. So I was born in nineteen ninety one. Yep. And Pretty early on, things went south. How old was I when when it got tough? Um, me and Keith were still kind of seeing each other, but 
I didn't know that he was, he lived like two hours away. Okay. And I didn't know that he was with this other woman. Right. Um, the day before Thanksgiving, you were four months old, and I was sitting there holding you, and you'd already finished your bottle probably about 30 minutes before, and I was sitting there holding you. You coughed one time, threw your head back, and you turned blue. Jeez. I didn't know what to do. I knew the, the couple next door had two daughters that had cerebral palsy. Mm-hmm. So I picked you up cold outside, everything. I went running next door barefoot, had a little blanket over you, carried you over there, and asked Billy if he, Billy and his girlfriend was Cindy. I asked him, I said, you know, did they know CPR? Mm -hmm. I figured they had kids with cerebral palsy, so they would. So they looked at me and said, no. And I I said, well, I need help. So they they had called 911 before they got there. Billy had laid you in the floor on your back. I told Billy, I said, I don't think, I don't know much, but I don't think you're supposed to do that. So I picked you up and kept beating you in the back, and you finally came to him. Is what was a little funny was we lived on one end of Maple Road, and the fire department was on the other end. It just so happened that night that 12 EMTs were doing the refreshers course. For? For CPR and getting clear, uh, recertified. Yeah. I had 12 EMTs in that living room that night <sighs> and they asked me if I knew CPR and I told them no and they said well um, they thought I needed to learn that's okay set me up for classes but they never did yeah <laughs> but I was working at wall at Rose's department store then and one of the girls at the um daycare you were in daycare and she had come to the house the next day to mm-hmm. check on you, or when you come home, because you spent your first Thanksgiving in the hospital hooked up to monitors, cords, and everything. <laughs> so I brought you home the day after Thanksgiving, and she had stopped by the house, and she said she wanted to check on you. And I told her you were doing good, that you had developed this um, stomach reflex, mm-hmm. so that when, when, no matter what you were eating or drinking, whenever you swallowed, the bowel in your throat would close to where it would come back up. Right. So she said that she, the main reason she wanted to come by was to check on you because in the daycare center, three days before, they had lost a child for the same reason. Oh. Not that I really wanted to hear that. Yeah. But we would, when you would breathe, you couldn't see your chest move. So it's what we would do while you, when we were home and also in the daycare, we'd put a stuffed toy on your back to watch that go up and down to make sure you were breathing. Gotcha. Whew. First, after that, we carried you every every week. I was carrying you to Children King's Daughters Hospital mm-hmm. in Chesapeake. They'd run all kinds of tests on you and everything. And the day you turned two years old, your doctor's name, I'll never forget his name, is Dr. Strope. <laughs> <laughs> and he came in, he looked at me, he said, well, I guess you're tired of coming up here every week. I said, nope, I'll come up here as often as I need to. Yeah. And he said, well, you don't have to. He outgrew it. Cool. So, and I was somewhere at home, it's probably my storage, I've still got the yellow card that said your name on it and Dr. Strope. Oof. I still have that. My God. Again, how do you survive this? Because you had a kid taken through no fault of your own. You have to go through all of this. You're like, I want to do this again. And then four months in, I'm in the hospital hooked up to a bunch of tubes. Yep. Like, what? How? <laughs> 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 it makes no sense. Because uh, Kubo ate grapes one time. And we had to rush him to the ER. He had his stomach pumped. And we were a mess. Oh, um, I was a mess yeah. for a while. <laughs> Believe me. Okay, okay. That makes that makes more Believe sense. Believe me. I was, yeah. <laughs> it sounds was, much more calming when you talk about it. You're like, yeah, this sort of happened, but... Okay. Okay. I was I was a basket case until I knew you were completely out of the water. Until you were probably four or five when you didn't have any episodes from the time you were two until you were yeah. four or five. Then I kind of started feeling relief a little bit. Whew. But you know, every time it, up until then, every time you'd cough, I'd jump. Right. And I you get like PTSD yeah. from it. Yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, they said you outgrew it, but it's like. Okay, he coughed. Is he going to be okay? Right. 
so sure i think that's how ptsd works yeah <laughs> man so then there's my thing and then two years later greg shows up yep that's how i like to put it now greg yep. just showed up <laughs> 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 you so you had one and it didn't stop you from wanting another one all the hardship of no really no did you always want more than one I wanted at least two. Yeah. No more than three or four. So uh, like you just decided one day, all right, let's do this again. Then you had yep. then you had Greg. Yep. Greg was not sick out the gate, which was probably easier. <laughs> <laughs> a, little bit. a little bit. Little bit. A <laughs> little bit. And then this was around the time you met Dad. Yep. Because Greg was how old? He was eighteen months old when we met Dad. Yeah. How did that happen? Um he had a place for rent, mm -hmm. and we I was working at Walmart at on the beach, and every day I'd ride by that house, and I'd see, see I, I liked that house. It had a big yard mm -hmm. and everything, and every time I'd see it for rent, by the time I'd inquire about it, it was rented. Ah, gotcha. It was always, uh, it didn't stay on for, uh, for rent for long, and Miss Debbie, she would carry us back and forth because I didn't have a car. Mm -hmm. My car was broke down. So she worked the same hours I did. So she'd swing by and pick us up because she went by our house anyway. And she carried me back and forth to work. And I told her about that house. And when we went to work one day, she had got off early and and didn't tell me. She went and talked to Dad about oh. the house. So then he, you know, he said he would rent it to us. And then she went back and told the store manager max and then told charles the assistant manager so they they got the money they rented the house they moved us in they filled the cabinets the refrigerator the freezer they even went and got us a a cubic deep freezer a little one filled that full of food just cause just cause and wow they it was funny because when they they went in they put brand new mini blinds up at the windows and Max was in charge of cleaning the floors. So they always said, if you wanted your floors clean, call Max. Because sure. he put so much soap. Oh. The more you, <laughs> you mop, the soapier it got. Oh, okay. More soap than water. Yeah. <laughs> got it. He watered down soap to yeah. clean floors. And I mean, they they went in and I had stuff for you and Greg on layaway for Christmas. Mm -hmm. They went and got that off layaway. Really? They went and got you know, all kinds of they spent over three thousand dollars they got y'all those little tykes the little log cabin uh -huh. they got that oh goodness they got um cars they got toys they got clothes they really and they just co-workers yep. knew you wanted a place yep. could never got it went and got it for you yeah wow and, they, and charles was kind of a heavy set guy mm -hmm. so he actually dressed up like santa and delivered the Oh, packages cool. to you guys and they uh, labeled everything from Santa and Charles got y'all two to sit on his lap for a minute and he said do y'all think mom's been good this year and you and Greg looked at each other and they and then you said yeah he said okay good because we got something for mom out there too and they had spent almost two hundred dollars on me wow yeah Man. And I'd only been working there maybe a year, year and a half. Really? And you just connected with them? Yeah. Well, the store that I worked at, they were really good. I mean, they looked out for their associates. That's cool. They had set up a fund to where it was called the Sunshine Fund, to where if somebody was getting ready to get their get evicted because they couldn't pay the rent, or they needed medicine, or their light bills paid, or something, needed food, there was money set aside for them to go and get the stuff, and they didn't have to pay it back. Wow, that's really special. Yeah. Having been through everything you've been through, and now to have like this caliber of good people yep. to actually like love on you is really cool. Yeah. Wow. They were. I enjoyed working with them. They, I mean, they made you feel feel like you were family. That's cool. Yeah. And how long did you work there? I worked there. Actually, I worked for Walmart seven years, but I worked there four years before we moved down here and then I finished three years here and worked for Walmart seven years and then I went to be a store manager of Bell's Outlet and then worked there for a year and I went started doing the papers. 
So this this uh, this house that you wanted to rent and stuff, that was the farm? Yep. Okay. Because anyone who's listened to any of these ever always say like, oh, I lived on a farm in North Carolina before I moved down here. Yep. Describe this farm. <laughs> I want to hear from your perspective. Because I was, I was, you know, how long did we live there? Um, two years? Two years. So I was like four to six. Some of my earliest memories are on that farm. So like I have pictures of it in my head that I can like close my eyes and see. I don't know about Greg. Greg probably a little fuzzier because he was so young. Yeah. But what what did we have on this farm? Oh goodness, we had an emu. We had fifty emus. Yeah. We had rhea birds. Rias, which are like white emus. We had fifty of those. And then we had two deer. We had a miniature pony named Oreo. And then we boarded two horses. One was named Blue, and one was named Silver. And then we had swans in the little pond, and we had a dog named Murphy, mm-hmm. and we had, oh my goodness, can't forget BR. We, ha- we had an ostrich. Oh. Do you think about that sometimes, of like, we owned an ostrich? Yeah. <laughs> like, how weird is that? Is that when you knew, like, I guess I'll stick around with Dad for a little bit because this man has an ostrich? Like, that's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> and in North weird. Carolina, who else had an ostrich? Yeah, Just weird. Dad. Yeah. He's yeah. always been kind of... Uncle Philip described him one time as a man who goes to the beat of his own drum. And I was like, yeah. I've never heard anything more aptly described. Yep. That's, that's him. <laughs> Did you know that when you saw the house first and when you moved in that there was all this stuff? No. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you saw this house for a really long time. You're like, I really want to live there. And then you yeah. opened Willy Wonka's farm in the back. Yep. yep. Wow. And I used to, we used to watch the animals while he went to New Hampshire. Right. On the summer. Yeah, because yeah. you... As kids, we remember BR as really fun. This giant ostrich that would dance, but you had a different relationship with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're also, how tall are you? 5'1". Five 5'1". One. Five one. Ostriches are much taller than that. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> he was mean. Th- and you had to feed him. I did. How, I did, had did, how did that go first time? Um, not very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, tried to come over the fence after me. Oh my God. And I would get you and Greg to try to get him at the other end of the fence. Mm -hmm. Distract him, make him dance. Yeah, y'all would get him to dance, and I'd try to put the food over the fence. Mm -hmm. And when I'd go to do it, he would hear me, and he'd come running back down there. And he tried to come over that fence after me. So after that, I just threw the feed over the fence. If he got it, that was fine. (laughs) If not, he'd wait until the next meal. (laughs) So I'm I'm trying to remember. We had that. We had peacocks. Yep. Because we had, like, we had uh, peacock feathers in these like garbage cans they were packed full of peacock feathers Mm -hmm. we had those and uh i remember one one time that because there's pictures of it where dad just like went to the store and just bought tulip seeds yes just because he's like i feel like tulips (laughs) (laughs) and we planted hundreds of them just because yeah we planted a thousand we planted a thousand yeah they were everywhere they were the I know it's just house. rows everywhere. The back of the house, the side, everywhere. We used to uh, cut them to have fresh cut flowers and people would stop by them. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. We sold tulips? Yeah, we sold tulips. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yep. So you were on the farm for two years. Mm-hmm. You had two boys. I remember hiding in the chicken coop once. We had a trampoline. We had a green apple tree in the front. Yep. I remember getting sick on those. How did we end up in Florida? Dad wanted to retire down here. He did not for no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. a very long Had you been before? <laughs> no, I'd never been. I'd always wanted to go because my best friend, Barbara, she, her dad was in the Navy, and he got transferred to Fort Lauderdale. And she was down here, and I always told her that when I graduated from high school, I wanted to go down. I never, never made it. We visited her. We visited her I in remember. South Carolina, yeah. I, I don't know where she's at now because I looked her up not too long, well, a while back, and it says she's not living in Ward, South Carolina anymore, so I have no clue where she's at. Huh. How do we end up in Naples? Because I know Dad had been to Florida a few times before. Mm-hmm. He just wanted to retire to Florida. Yeah. Did we just, like, did you take convincing? Because at this point, had you traveled at all? No. So you were born and raised Outer Banks in North Carolina, and then Dad's like, let's go to Florida. It, like, was it a hard sell, or were you like, sure? I was ready to go. <laughs> really? I always wanted to travel. Okay. But I didn't know if I would be able to. Sure, of course. And then, of course, we got my dad, and yeah. we've been everywhere. <laughs> yeah, then we've traveled the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Okay. So then we just packed up, came down here. Was it different than you expected? Not really, because I'd seen pictures. But the first time we came down here, we came on vacation. I, we got down here, and I think that's the first time I ever got sun poisoning. Oh, yeah. I've had that once. It sucks. It does. It's sunburn that blisters up. We're just not made for it. No. And Dad's <laughs> like, just go in the sun for a little longer, and it'll be fine. No, Dad. We're Irish. Yeah. You know, we're Scottish. <laughs> this, 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 the sun is our natural enemy. <laughs> yeah. But it, I got so bad. I mean... If I hadn't, he told me if I hadn't gotten better after the third third day, yeah. I was going to go to hospital. I was that bad. <gasps> and you stayed? <laughs> we stayed. <laughs> that I mean, didn't I, deter you? No. But I got so sunburnt that I couldn't walk. Ooh. And I got nauseated in my stomach. Yeah. And the only way I got so sunburnt that if I stopped, I had to put lotion on my legs to be able to just move them. Oh. I was miserable. <laughs> uh, are you? Do you like being hot or cold? If you had to choose, in between. Well, of course. <laughs> would I, you rather be super hot or would you rather be really cold? If you, if you, if it's got to be the extremes. Ooh, that's hard to say. Cause I yeah. like bundling up in blankets. Yeah, I li- I would rather be cold, but Dad yeah. would rather be hot. I would. I think I would rather be cold too because I I, sl- I sleep better. I'm yeah. more comfortable. Totally. Yeah. You can always add layers. Yep. Yeah. You can't take off enough to cool off, but you can yeah. pile on enough to. I agree. Because I know growing up, we we would go to bed at night because Daddy would, he it was weird because he would run the oil heater during the day, mm-hmm. but at night he'd cut it off. Oh, when so, you needed it. Yeah. So we would get in the bed and we'd put, put our blankets on us, but we'd also take our winter coats and put on top of us to keep us warm. Smart. You get creative in poverty, I find. Yep. <laughs> we had the oven open. I think about that a lot. Not a lot of people have that experience of no. like using the oven to heat a house. Like yep. if you don't have central heat, what are you going to do? You turn the oven on and you just open the door. Yeah. That's like, you know, back home we had this, what they call space heaters. Yeah. When we moved down here, um, I looked around for kerosene companies. You didn't have anything. And I mentioned a space heater and said, what? What is that? And I'm like, you don't know what space heater is? Yeah. And it's like, no. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, we had them back home, you know. We we did end up finding some because I remember back when it used to get cold. It doesn't get cold anymore. When it did, when it was really cold and we had to get out of the shower, we'd have to put the space heater yep. in front of the shower so it wouldn't freeze to death. Yep. That was nuts. Yep. So we're in. You moved to Florida. I know we were in a car for a little bit. We were in a hotel for a little bit. Then we were in Bayshore Club. And then we lived in the back of a store for a year. Yep. A year or two years? How long were a we year. in the shop? A year. a year. And then we ended up at the house yep. that we were at. So that all happened pretty quickly. Yep. But then middle school rolls around. And I remember seventh grade was when you got sick. Because I rem- I distinctly remember that night. It was seventh grade. It was a concert. And you didn't come. And it was the only event in my entire life you've ever not showed up at. Yep. Which you had a pretty good reason. You got yeah. breast cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Did did you, how was that? Like, did you know? Could you feel? Like, I kind of. How did this experience happen? I kind of expected it sooner or later. Yeah, because our family is. Because family history. Yeah. Um, Mom had it, and two of my sisters had it. And then when daddy's two, when daddy passed away, come to find out, his two sisters had it. Ah. So, um. The genetic lottery isn't in our favor. No. Yeah. Um, but they uh, they kept telling me I needed to have a mammogram done. Sure. I kept putting it off and putting it off, and then the doctor said, you know, with your family history, you need to get it. You need to get checked. And I went in, had the mammogram done. They took the pictures, and then the nurse came in. And she said, well, we need more pictures. So hmm. Okay. And uh, she took the pictures, went back, and she came back and said, well, I need to get pictures of this way. I told her, I said, um, do I have it? She said, uh, I don't know. We'll, have, we'll talk to the doctor and see what he says. I told her, I said, well, I figured, you know, sooner or later it would be my time. I told her the family history, and I said, you know, I figured sooner or later I'm setting duck. And she looked at me kind of weird, and she said, um, yeah, your time's up. Really? And I thought, okay. So, um, I went Did you in. panic? 
Cause not you, really. Because you can really, because you can say like, feel like it's coming down the road. I feel that way all the time because family history is like, oh man, you know, we talk about it all the time. That like when it does happen, you're. Uh, did you? Were you like, oh, I've been through so much that you're like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um. Even if I, even though I kind of knew sooner or later my time would come up, uh huh. You're not fully prepared. Sure. Like, how did you react when it was like official? I think I was in shock, but I think Dad took it worse than I did. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I'm 12, I don't know any of this. Yeah, like I just know that one day you weren't at a concert, <laughs> and I was like, "What is happening?" And we spent the night at Cody's, yeah. and it was like we never have sleepovers during the school night. Yeah. Um. They they had given me a book about explaining the breast cancer and procedures and what to look for and everything. And when we went home from the doctor, Dad was on the internet looking up all kinds of stuff. And um, I, with my family here, they said that I only had it in one. But they told me that if I had the surgery in one, then within six months it'd be in the other. So I said, no, I'm not going through the surgery twice, do it all at once. So they did that. And I went through 26 weeks of shots. Ooh. To my God. To where I needed to be. Were you scared? No, I come to the point where I don't like shots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my That's fair. getting a shot and I'm like, do I have to? Yeah, like, I'm tired of this. Yeah. Wow. I think I still have one of the little bottles of saline that I had to use. So, no, that was, for me, seventh grade. I'm really bad at remembering years. I always remember, like, in relation to how old I was. When I was nine, I did this. When I was 12, I did this. And then I have to retroactively do the math. Of like, okay, if I was eight, that means it was in 1999. Mm -hmm. And figuring that out. So that happens. Middle school goes. High school goes. How, how did David break the rule? <laughs> so David is not a friend. David's as family as it gets. The only right. thing he doesn't have is the last name and the genetics. Right. Right. I mean, his kids are your grandkids. Like right. David is as family as it gets. But he broke the rule. There was no sleepovers during school. That was always the case. All growing up. Yep. We get to senior year of high school and David moves in with us. Yep. How? What what happened? Because we always told David he had a place there anytime he needed it. Because mm -hmm. we knew his family life weren't that good either. Sure. So Christmas that year, um, she had, his mom had been riding down the road and picked up a drunk on the side of the road. Right. Brought him home, gave him David's bed. Well, David had, Tina was there, his sister. Mm -hmm. And David was worried because they didn't know this guy. Right. And his sister was 14. Right. So he was, no matter what, he was gonna protect Tina. Sure. So he watched and protected her and. Just to be safe. Yep. And. David came to me after school one day, and he had asked me if the offer still stood. I said, of course. I said, you know, you're always welcome here. And he said that he hadn't slept in two days. Whew. He was literally getting ready to lay on the side of the road, taking that. I told him, I said, no, you got to be about there. Go. And that's, he's been with us ever since. You got another kid. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Or the merrier. I mean, at one point, how many... Because remember we had this whole thing where, like, friends, it was a rite of passage that at one point either my friends or Greg's friends had lived with us yep. for an extended period of time. Yep. How many people did we have at the max? Um, Six kids. Six. That's All a lot. All boys. All boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think about that? Like, the first half of the life being you know, so rough and so many things taken and then the second half kind of like a bit of a recompense for it all. Does it feel that way to you? Yeah. Cause, um, I've seen so many kids being tossed aside and kids weren't asked to be born. It was your decision to bring them in the world and for you to mistreat them, that to me is unacceptable. Sure. And if I had... I've always told everybody, if I had a house big enough that I could take all these kids in that nobody wanted or would abuse, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd take them in. Yeah. But I don't have that big of a house. Yeah. <laughs> you filled the one you had to the brim, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, 
To me, a kid is a precious thing. I mean, they bring so much joy and happiness, and they don't ask for anything. Yeah. You know, all they want is for somebody to love them and care for them. Yeah. I mean, what harm is that? You know, how difficult is that? Yeah. I mean, I see, uh, I've seen so many kids get so abused, and it's like, give me that kid. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'll take them. Yeah. I mean. Where do you think that comes from? Because you, more than probably anyone I've ever met, you have this, like, unconditional love for everyone. But that wasn't necessarily given to you. So, like, how does, where does that come from? I think it comes from knowing what I've been through. Yeah. If I can help a kid not go through that, yeah. if somebody go through that, I'll do anything for them. I would, I would give up everything to help somebody. Yeah, I've yeah. seen you do it. I mean, it's like, you know. I do it, and I, I don't expect anything in return. A lot of people do. Yeah, totally. To me, if you're going to help somebody for recognition, then why are you doing it? Yeah. You know, Mom always told me we're here to help people, not exploit them or harm them or anything like that. You're here to, if you can't help them, then what are you doing? And I guess I live by that, you know. If, if I can, I mean, if I go in the store and, you know, just like I was in the uh Benita a couple of weeks ago, and one of the cashiers was saying that she was hoping she could go on break so she could get her something to drink. So I went in and got her a drink, and I thought she was going to cry. And I said, don't you do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's just the type of person I am. If, you know, if I see somebody that needs something or something that I can help with, why not? Yeah, I've, I've seen it. You know, it's just me. Yeah. I, hey, I wish more people were like you. <laughs> There aren't there aren't enough. No, there's few and far between now. And nobody everybody wants something in return. They don't want to help anybody. And that that bothers me. Yeah. I, I mean, I get it. <laughs> so how has it been? Because Glenn, you know, was in the military for a while, he moved away, he had kids elsewhere. Greg was in the military for a while, he had kids elsewhere. But now with David's kids and now Ronan and Iro are back, which is awesome. How has it been being like a full-time grandma oh it's been fantastic yeah i love it yeah i do i mean to to pull up to the house or they come to us and the kids get out of the car and they run to me holler grandma oh yeah oh that just melts my heart <laughs> I, just, I mean dj for a while i don't know if it, he didn't know how to take me or what because mm-hmm. he really didn't have much to do with me but now he does yeah but jade Oh man, and Ronan. Yeah, <laughs> they see me, and they, I mean, they literally almost trip herself getting to me. Oh yeah, you know, Jade especially. That. Yeah, I mean that is as a mom of all boys, <laughs> and with all the <laughs> friends moving in, it was all boys. Of course, it's the one girl that's yeah. like obsessed with you. Yeah. And with her, I was there with her from day one. Right. Where the the other ones, I wasn't. DJ was like a year old when I got spent time with him. Right. And. Um, Ronan, I'd only see him maybe two weeks out there. Yeah. Right, because Greg lived far yeah. away. And, and now and I, I row, I didn't really get to spend time with him until they moved down here. Right. So, you know, uh, being a grandparent, yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. I do. I, I would have to catch myself because I go in the store and oh, Jay would like that or DJ would. Yeah. <laughs> <you know. laughs> it's like, and I see stuff that I know they would like. And yeah. It's like, yeah, but I have to kind of curb my bond. Cause right. You know. There's only so much space. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't back up a toy truck to everyone's house every day. No, I wish I could. Though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I like seeing smiles on everybody's faces. Yeah. You know? And now Christmas is your favorite holiday. Oh, it it's is. It's like a whole thing. Uh, Christmas has always been my ho- my favorite holiday. You know, growing up, you know, even as bad as things were, it was like when Christmas was around, the Christmas lights, I love Christmas lights. Yeah. That's my favorite. And it was like when I was growing up, I could look at the Christmas lights and it would put me in my own little world to where sure. everything was safe and calm mm-hmm. and 
everything. Well, once Christmas was over with, it was like, oh, bring your lights back, please. Right. It started back up. Yeah. So you had your own little, like, Christmas escapism. Yep. That was my escape. Yep. Wow. So this this far in life now, having been through everything that you've been through, because there's so many ups and downs, and it was, like, super dark, and now it's kind of, do you feel like it's evened out? Do you feel like it's, like, where where do you sit at now, like, looking back on your life? My life is definitely better now Yeah. than what it was. And I've had people ask me, you know, I've had people say, you know, I would give you every penny in the world to go through your childhood. I tell them no. I don't think anyone else would survive, to be honest with you. Mm -mm. I told them I said there would be no amount of money for me to go back through any of that. And everybody says, you know, the youngest kid gets away with everything. Oh, no. Not (laughs) when it came to me. I was the one that caught the blunt end of it. You know, everybody said, well, Loretta did it. And it's like... I wasn't even home. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I got punished for it. And it's like, come on now. If I'm going to get punished, let me get punished for something I did, not right. what I didn't do. And that's what I mean by, like, now, if you were the super hateful person of, like, I'm going to get punished now and I'm going to do it. Like, you have every right to be a horrible person, given the way that you grew up, but you didn't. And it's kind of, I don't know. I, I... I hope you found happiness now. I have. I hope, like, at, at some point, given all of the nonsense and terribleness that's happened prior to now, I hope at least you found some sort of fulfillment in life. Yeah? Yeah. Because a lot of, lot of my childhood, they said, because I've talked to a couple of people, and they said that the reason, because I, I don't remember a whole lot of my childhood. Right, you block it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. they said the reason I have was because it was so bad that I blocked it out. Yeah, that's pretty that's common. Like, I wasn't a bad kid growing up because I was, I was scared of my dad. Yeah. You know, a lot of times walking the house, you didn't know if you were going to get hit or get a smile. Right. So I kind of stayed in my own little corner. Yeah, <laughs> kinda sure. secluded myself. But a lot of my childhood, I couldn't tell you. Right. Just very few bits and pieces, which... I figured, you know, they say you got to go through the bad to get to the good. Mm-hmm. Well, I can definitely contribute to that. Right. Test yeah. to that, I guess. It's like, how do we skip that part? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. it's That's the one thing that I found is like every bad thing that's happened at the, v- this is just trying to make sense of it all, is that it makes you appreciate the good. It does. And for you, it sounds like you have used that as fuel to not be that. I, I refuse to, to let that define me and create my outlook on things yeah it's not no you know you see these people that yeah you know they've gone through bad times but they make it define who they are and they push it on somebody else thanks to mom she taught me not to do that i I learned a lot from mom yeah and i contribute the way i am to her yeah so well, that makes sense because I contribute the way that I am to you. So here we are. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and you've got to be a mom to so many people. Yeah. Which is which is pretty astounding. Yeah. I used to think it was funny when we go to your football games. Oh yeah. We'd be sitting in the bleachers, me and dad, and I'd had all these kids come up and say, "Hey, mom," and everybody look at me like, "Wait, they're the same age. How are they all hers?" And yeah. They kind of <laughs> look at me funny in this like. Right, and that one's Puerto Rican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had Rodney coming up. I uh-huh. had David, and I had some of Greg's friends come mm-hmm. up, a lot of yours. And it's like, everybody called me mom, and they look at me like, hmm. Right. <laughs> what kind of girl is that? You right. know? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but you finally got your orphanage. Yep. There in you your go. own way. Yep. Well, I think yep. it's worked out. Yep. It's, I've enjoyed Every minute of it. I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. And all of y'all kids, you know, even though y'all were the same age, y'all all got along. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that's true. That helps. It, it helps. For the most part. Yeah. Well, me and Greg got along when we got older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, we made you earn it. <laughs> yeah, there was a time there when y'all were little. I'd get into it to the point where I'd dare y'all. I'd put y'all in the room and dare y'all to look at each other. Yeah. yeah. Brothers. But it, know, checked it checked out when oh. Greg had 18. <laughs> I mean, you know, we could have been worse. Yeah. Neither of us went to jail. True. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's boys, right? Rivalry, yeah, yeah, that's, that's brothers. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. That's I'll make an excuse for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that's just the way it is with kids growing up. You know, they 
have their issues when they're little, but when they get up in their teenage years, then they start, you know, getting closer and um, it's worked out. Yeah, I think you've been. I I think you've built a pretty good foundation. I think you've shown what it means to love people, which I think is really really important. I I hope. Yeah. You know, I can confirm, ma. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's a legacy I wanted to give. You know, just you know. Love everybody, you know, especially yeah. kids, you know. A lot of them have it so hard and they don't understand why. And they shouldn't have to understand why because, you know, sure. it's not their fault. Because they're kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I love kids. That's all I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Love kids, love people. <laughs> yeah. Don't let your yeah. past define who you are. Yeah. Cause, I mean, I've, I look at you got to help everybody. Yeah. You know? you We're know, all some, in this together. Yep. Yeah. You know, some you can help to the point where it's not going to work, and then you have to kind of walk away. But at right. least you walk away knowing at least I help, I tried. Right. So. I think I'm I'm now understanding this is where I got it from because I tell people all the time like we're all in this together. Yep. And I'm start I'm just now realizing it came from you. So that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I d- I think that's a solid legacy. Yeah. I think it's one that matters. Yeah. Yep. I'm down with that. Yeah. And uh, just like that, Ma, we've been talking for over an hour. Oh, really? <laughs> Look at that. You survived. See, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> you were nervous. I was. <laughs> See, it wasn't that bad. What do you think? T- episode 200. Wow. Yeah, I'm it's so a long, proud of it's you. a long time. Stop it. <laughs> I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of all of y'all kids. You know, y'all have done so much and, you know, y'all. Have, we're trying. You know, you've made your own way, you know. That's and true. It's, it's to sit back. I mean, that day that we went for your movie premiere. Yeah. Tethered. Oh yeah, I was so proud. Ma, come on. I was when they showed the the credits at the end. Uh-huh. And I saw your name. I yelled. Yeah. And I mean, everybody kind of looked at me like, "Hey, that's my kid up there," <laughs> you know. Yeah. But you know, I am. I'm proud of you know y'all have made your own way. You've got your own lives, and yeah, y'all have y'all have done great. You know. We're trying. Well, we couldn't have done it without you. So you know, it, <laughs> it, thanks. Well, I'm glad I could help. Now, normally, I would ask people where can they find you online and where they can find your stuff, but you're not online. You don't have stuff, so. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, you, if they find you in real life, it announce, and then they get a free hug or something. I'm always up for a hug. Boom. There we go. I love you. I love you, too. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, short films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, and Chris. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.